Hello and welcome to the Rule 23 video. By now you have learned all the names and the definitions of the lights along with the arc of visibility and the range that every light is supposed to be seen. Now in this rule, we're gonna focus on the lights that a power driven vessel underway is required to display. Rule 23A states that a power driven vessel underway shall exhibit a masthead light forward a second mass headlight abaft of and higher than the forward one, except that a vessel of less than 50 meters in length shall not be obliged to exhibit such light, but may do so. Side lights and a stern light. So let's take a look at this diagram. This diagram helps illustrate what the rule is stating. A power driven vessel needs to have a mass headlight forward a second mass headlight abaft or behind the forward light. And this light also needs to be placed at a higher elevation. Now this is not required for vessels that are less than 50 meters in length. And the vessel also needs to have side lights and a stern light. Rule 23B states that an air cushion vessel when operating in the non-displacement mode shall, in addition to the lights prescribed in paragraph A of this rule, exhibit an all round flashing yellow light. So let's dive into this in the diagram. What this rule is stating is that when an air cushion vessel is operating in a non-displacement mode, they need to display a flashing all round yellow light. So non-displacement mode means that the vessel is not touching the surface of the water. When the vessel is operating on the surface of the water, they will display the lights of a power driven vessel. Rule 23 C states that a wig craft only when taking off, landing, and in flight near the surface shall, in addition to the lights prescribed in paragraph A of this rule, exhibit a high-intensity, all-round flashing red light. So this picture illustrates what this rule is stating. The wig craft has to display the same lights as a power-driven vessel, but in addition, needs to have an all-round, high-intensity, flashing red light when they are landing and in flight near the surface of the water. Rule 23D item one states that a power driven vessel of less than 12 meters in length may in lieu of the lights prescribed in paragraph A of this rule exhibit an all round white light and side lights. So this diagram shows you a power driven vessel which is less than 12 meters and per the rules a vessel of this size can display an all round white light and their side lights. Rule 23D item two states that a power driven vessel of less than seven meters in length, whose maximum speed does not exceed seven knots, may in lieu of the lights prescribed in paragraph A of this rule, exhibit an all round white light and shall, if practicable, also exhibit side lights. So this diagram illustrates a power driven vessel. This power driven vessel is less than seven meters. This size vessel can display an all round white light and side lights if practicable. The call out for this is that the vessel cannot exceed seven knots of top speed. Rule 23D item three states the mass head light or all round white light on a power driven vessel of less than 12 meters in length may be displaced from the fore and aft center line of the vessel if center line fitting is not practicable provided that the side lights are combined in one lantern, which shall be carried on the fore and aft center line of the vessel or located as nearly as practicable in the same fore and aft line as the mass head light or the all round white light. So this diagram illustrates a vessel that is less than 12 meters in length. And what the rule is stating is that a vessel less than 12 meters in length can have an all round white light and side lights. Now, if the vessel does not have a console or a T-top or a roof, the light can be placed on the rear of the vessel along one of the sides. So this is very common in center console boats or small boats that might not have a, a T-top. And what this rule does is it allows the all round white light to be placed on one of the sides of the vessel. Now, the one call out is that if you do have a center console vessel and it does have a T-top, and you do have that light mounted on the roof of the boat, you need to ensure that that light is taller than anything else that you have mounted on the roof of the boat. So for example, if you have a radar on that boat, like we do on our boat, you need to ensure that when you stand the light up, that light is actually taller than the radar on the boat. Now, the reason why this is important is because if that light were to be lower than something else that you have on the boat, 
another vessel that is approaching your vessel that is coming from the side of the obstruction will not be able to see that light and will not be able to identify your vessel at night. All right, so that was another long one and a lot of information that we covered. Some of it might be confusing to you, but it is extremely important that, again, you fully understand all of these before moving on to the next video, because this is gonna be covered extensively in the final exam. So before we move on to the next video, I'm gonna do the same thing as the previous video. I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna show you every one of the templates that we just covered. So you have the opportunity to take a picture of them or screenshot them to help you in your studies. The first diagram is for rule 23A, which covers power-driven vessels underway. Now this is a diagram for rule 23B, which covers air cushion vessels. Now remember that they must display the same lights as a power-driven vessel, but they need to display a flashing yellow light when operating in the non-displacement mode, and non-displacement means that they are not touching the surface of the water. This is the diagram for rule 23C, which covers wig crafts. They also display the same lights as a power-driven vessel, but they need to display a high-intensity flashing red light when they are landing or operating near the surface of the water. Remember that when they're operating on the water, they're classified as a power-driven vessel. This is the diagram for rule 23D, item one. I'm pause a second, let you take a picture of it or a screenshot. This is the diagram for rule 23D item two. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a minute there to go ahead and take a picture or screenshot. And lastly, this is the diagram for rule 23D item three. And I'll pause for a second to give you a chance to take a picture or screenshot of this one. All right, so hopefully these templates and diagrams that I made are really gonna help you in your studies. Practice hard, study all of these, fully understand them, and when you're ready, I'll be waiting for you in the next video.